science in the parking lot. You know, Mr. Mon, I have absolutely loved the fact that the weather has been so beautiful and I've been able to spend so much time outside, especially with my dog and my family. But you know what? I have to be honest with you. With all this time I've been spending outside, I've been getting a little bit bored. All of my normal activities and toys that I play with, they're just getting a little bit boring. So I was thinking the other day and I was curious about something that I could do or something that I could make to play outside with. And I really got to thinking and then it hit me. Something that I used to play with outside all the time whenever I was young and I haven't played with in a while. And that is bubbles. Bubbles are so much fun and so awesome and a really great way to take a look at true scientific concepts. Like, why is it that some bubbles are bigger than others? Why is it that some bubbles fly really high into the sky before they burst, but others pop just like that? I wonder, hmm. Well, you know, as a scientist, I think that part of what could cause a difference in these bubbles that we see could be what they're made of. Hmm. What are bubbles made of? Well, I got to thinking and I went on a little scavenger hunt at my house and I started looking for things that maybe I could use to help me make my own bubble solution. So what items in my house maybe create bubbles or sometimes bubbles come out of them? Hmm, what could that be? <gasps> I know, well, when I do dishes, I know that bubbles are always present. I use this Dawn dishwashing soap or any kind of dishwashing soap for that matter to wash my dishes and there's always a lot of bubbles. The more soap, the more bubbles. So I'm wondering if maybe this dish soap could help me make my own bubble solution. But you know, as a scientist, I'm not going to stop there. I'm curious as to whether or not there are some other materials I could use to help me make some bubbles too. Well, let's see here. I have some regular hand soap that I use around the house, but this hand soap is unique because you can notice it's really watery. Hmm. The pump is also a little bit different. Well, let's see. Ooh, this is a foaming hand soap. So it kind of creates its own bubbles just by pumping it out. Hmm, I wonder if this could help me make a bubble solution or maybe bubble bath. Oh, I wonder if bubble bath could help me make my own bubble solution. Well, I'm excited to get started. Mrs. Farr, do you have any ideas of ways I could make my own bubble solution using some of these materials? Hey, Miss Hawklander, look what I found around my house to make my own bubble solution. I found some bubble bath and I found some baby shampoo and some dishwashing liquid to try to make my own mixture of bubbles. But what I notice is the bubbles that I buy at the store are a lot like thick water. So I wanted to make my mixtures not too thick, but not too runny either. So I took some water and I mixed just a couple of drops of each kind of soap into my mixture and just kind of stirred it up a little bit. So it's kind of thick, but not too thick and not too runny either. I know that bubble bath and baby shampoo and especially dishwashing liquid makes a lot of good bubbles. So I'm curious to see how my mixtures will compare to the store-bought bubble solution. Now I'm going to take my solutions outside and find some bubble blowers to help me test and see which bubbles are the best. So I have my bubble blowers to help me test out my bubble solutions. And the first one we're gonna try out is the dishwashing liquid. 
Let's see what kind of bubbles it makes. Hmm. Okay, next up we have the baby shampoo solution. A couple of drops of baby shampoo and water. Those turned out a little bit better, it looks like. A little bit easier to blow. So I'm thinking as we're testing is what else could I put in my solution? How many more drops of soap could I add to really get those good bubbles? Next up we have the bubble bath solution. And it doesn't look like it's working as well. Let's compare that to our store-bought bubble solutions and see how it compares. Wow, lots of bubbles. I'm wondering what is in the store-bought solution that maybe I could add to my homemade solutions to get better bubbles. Or maybe, as I'm looking, does the wand have anything to do with the bubbles that I'm making? Could I change my wand somehow and get bigger, better bubbles? I don't know. Mrs. Clark, what do you think? Hello, scientist of JTSD. It's Mrs. Clark here, and I have some great ideas, I think, for some bubble wands. You know, right now, it's kind of hard to get out. And I know you've had some great ideas from Ms. Hawklander and Mrs. Farr about making bubble solution, but where do you get a wand? But I think, I may have a few ideas for you, and I'm hoping that um, maybe you can come up with your own. Well, I went looking through my kitchen, and I found my whisk, my large whisk, and I have my small whisk. Now, these are made of metal, and I'm wondering, I dip this down into the bubble mixture and shook it or just held it up for the wind to go through it, I think it could work. And wondering, would I have different size bubbles with my small whisk? And then I thought, look at the end. That's like a little loop for a bubble wand. I'm wondering if I just dipped it in, could I make bitty bubbles? Well, let me know what you find out about whisk. And then I found this cute cookie cutter. I'm wondering, could I, sorry about the jiggly film, could I dip this into the bubble solution, pull it up, and then blow through the hole or hold it up to the wind? Hmm, even though it doesn't have a straight edge, it's kind of a curvy edge. Wonder, could I still make a bubble with that? Then, look what I found. Oh, it's my good yellow Tupperware strainer, or some people call it a colander. I'm wondering if I dipped this into the bubble mixture, just set it down in the container, and then brought it up. Look at all those holes. Do you think I would make that many bubbles? Oh, how fun would that be? Then I thought, I know, maybe metal and plastic. I know bubble ones can be made of plastic, but what about wood? I have a wooden spoon here. And I'm wondering, could this be used as a bubble wand? And again, look at the handle. It has a small hole in it. Could that be used as a bubble wand? Then I was looking in my craft supplies and I found some of these Chanel stems or pipe cleaners. And so I engineered a little bubble wand and I'm thinking I could dip this into the bubble mixture and then I have a handy dandy handle on it and I could lift it up. And if I held that up to the wind or if I blew into it, Maybe that could be a bubble wand. I'm wondering what you could find around your house to make bubble wands. Dad, come on, we're making bubbles. If you make bubbles, make sure to share them with us.